As we begin December, all is quiet across the United States, but could a pattern change be in our future? Plus the latest snow totals from the Northeast and the Lake Effect snow, all next at the Weather Farm. Hello, welcome to the Weather Farm. I'm meteorologist Christopher Hale. Here's your week forecast. On our Monday, we have a few snow showers across parts of Iowa and Missouri. The central plains and northern plains is dominated by an area of high pressure. We do see some snow up in Saskatchewan that's going to make its way east across this coming week. We still have the lake effect snows across parts of New York and Ohio, as well as the northern Michigan and the upper peninsula. Those will continue into our Monday into our Tuesday night. Down across far southern Texas, we have an area of disturbed weather associated with a low pressure system in Mexico. By our Tuesday, that area of disturbed weather moves a little bit further north, bringing a chance of showers and thunderstorms to far southern Texas. We continue with the lake effect snows across the Great Lakes and into New York. That area of high pressure is dove southeastward into the lower Ohio Valley, bringing calm conditions. But we see up again in Saskatchewan, we see that area of low pressure starting to form. Out ahead of it, we have snows spreading across central and southern Manitoba. This is associated with a clipper system that will move across Canada and into the northeast later for our week. But out west, it is generally calm and quiet conditions from Washington all the way down to the California coast, as well as the mountain regions of the Rockies. Those snowfall totals that we were talking about with that lake effect snow, where we've already seen parts here in uh, New York where uh, we've received generally three to five inches, or three to five feet, I'm sorry, around the Waterton, New York area. Um, we've had one report of 57.8 inches of snowfall already in Copenhagen. And then across parts of west, far southwestern New York into northeastern or northwestern Pennsylvania, in northeastern Ohio, where you could see an additional 8 to 12 inches of snow. Parts across parts of far southwestern Ontario, another 10 to 12 inches. But the snows are really going to die down across uh, central New York. We could see another 4 to 8 inches of snow. We could also see additional snows in the higher elevations of Vermont as well. Looking at the Great Lakes, we will continue to see lake effect snow across the Upper Peninsula of, of Michigan, and associated with the lake effect off of Lake Superior, as well as the northern part of Michigan and along the Lake Michigan coast. Generally, four to six inches of additional snow is expected. Those snow showers that we saw across Iowa and Missouri, we will see just light accumulations through our Wednesday morning. If we look at the United States for this coming week through our Thursday morning, we see generally it is uh, the provinces of Canada where we see the majority of the snowfall occurring, and again into the northeast and then down the Appalachians. But out west, we don't really see any significant snow during the first half of the upcoming work week. But however, we are going to take a look at the upper level patterns. This is the 500 millibar chart, and this is the North American view. So we've seen that area of high pressure across the northern Pacific, the giving us that West Pacific oscillation being negative. But we start to see signs that that is going to break down by this coming weekend. We start to see that ridging building across the western half of the United States. We see troughs digging into the northern Pacific and south of Alaska. That's going to push that warm air ridge onshore. As these troughs continue to come off of Siberia into the North Pacific, it's going to continue to funnel warmer air into the western coast of the United States. And that is going to continue to move east. We're going to see trough over Greenland. So where we see those troughs forming down in the lower United States as we get into the middle parts of December, the eastern half of the United States looks to turn much warmer while it's the western half of the United States that's going to be significantly colder. And that's going to be due to the fact that as we get to that later part of December, we're going to see a lot more ridging across the Gulf of Alaska. So we're going to have troughs to its west, troughs to its east, so it's going to allow that cold air to spill into the western half of the United States, whereas we've seen typically the start from Thanksgiving into our December that the cold air has been in the eastern half of the United States 
because the high pressure has been blocking up here in the North Pacific. But that's about to change as we start to see troughs here ridging in the Gulf of Alaska, colder air in the western half of the United States. This is a pattern change. As we look at the WPO index, the West Pacific Oscillation, we do see that going positive around the 12th to the 16th of December and staying positive through the end of December. It's definitely a trend that we'll continue to watch as new and new data comes out, but something we want to make you aware of. But let's zoom in a little closer here into the United States. So for our Monday, we have that area of cold air for the eastern half of the United States. That trough begins to move offshore. We still, ha still have northwesterly flows, which are going to keep us a little cool. But as you can see, the ridge is wanting to build from the west. It's wanting to build further east. With that clipper system that's going to move out of Saskatchewan into the northeast, bringing a chance of snow by our Thursday, it's going to give a reinforcing shot of cold air to the Great Lakes and the northeast. We're even going to see some cool temperatures down far in the Carolinas into Georgia. But again, all, we just need to look out west, and we see that ridging continuing to build, and it's continuing to move further east than what we've seen over the last 10 days. So it's going to bring warmer weather by the time we get to next weekend into the Central Plains, into the Ohio Valley. And we start to see a, a system that's digging here. And it is this system, as it begins to dig and move east, that could push out the colder temperatures for the eastern half of the United States that we've seen since Thanksgiving into the first week of December. So a lot to still keep in mind. Some of this stuff is still over a week out. A lot could change. But we're starting to see signs that the pattern could change as we move into the second and third weeks of December. So let's put our maps into motion for this week. Again, we have that area of high pressure over the plains on our Monday. It's going to dive into the Ohio Valley for our Tuesday. We see that clipper system form over Saskatchewan. It's going to move over into Manitoba, into uh, Ontario by the time we get into our Wednesday. And it's going to bring out snowfall across parts of Ontario into Quebec, into the northeast. We can see a general of four to six additional inches of snow in the interior parts of New York. Along the coast, you're going to remain with rain. That area of disturbed weather down in Texas for our Monday, Tuesday is going to continue to provide uh, unsettled weather across that area. We do see a little bit of some heavier precipitation moving into Arkansas by the time we get into our Saturday as well, another system, another clipper system moves across the Canadian prairies into the northeast by the time we get to next weekend. In terms of rainfall, the, we're going to see light amounts across parts of Texas into Louisiana, into Mississippi and Alabama, generally under one inch of rain through our Thursday morning. So we put our temperature anomaly map into motion again. These is our two meter of temperature anomalies. So this is the deviation from the normals for your particular location on the, your particular day. So what we see is the blues and the purples generally in the eastern half of the United States. It's the pattern we've been in for the last week. But what we start to see out west is we start to see this warming pattern taking place. As we get into our Thursday, that warmth starts to spread east. We get a little bit of a reinforcing shot of colder air for our Thursday into our Friday. But we look back west. We're seeing temperatures 15, 20 degrees above the seasonal norms. And it is that warm air that's going to continue to spread east and modify just slightly. But by the time we get into our Saturday, we're seeing generally no real big area of significantly cooler temperatures. In fact, on our Sunday, most of the country is either seasonal or across the plains where we're going to see temperatures 15 to 20 degrees above seasonal norms those places where they were sub-zero a few days ago. So definitely we're seeing a pattern change as we get around to the 9th to the 10th of December. We first talked about this last week in our Thanksgiving Day video, um, and it's a pattern that continues to play out in the models. So for our Monday, we're going to see, again, cooler temperatures in the eastern half of the United States, 20s and 30s across the Ohio Valley. Across the northern plains, teens are going to be common. Down into Texas, you're going to have the 60s and 70s. We're going to see 50s as far south as the Florida coast. This remains into play for our Tuesday with even low 50s, 54 in Tallahassee, 
We're going to have cooler than normal temperatures across the eastern half of the United States. Parts of western Kansas into Nebraska, you could be flirting into the mid-60s by the time we get to our Tuesday. We move into our Wednesday, Tuesday night. This is what we think will be one of the coolest nights across the United States. And even down into Florida, northern Florida, we could see temperatures in the mid-30s. So definite concern there for a lot of the crops. Um, we see the freezing line into central Georgia, into central Alabama, something we'll definitely need to watch. But as the time we get into Wednesday, that cooler air starts to retreat just slightly in advance of that next clipper system. Uh, we see 40s and 50s across the central plains, 40s for the Ohio valleys. The real cold area is confined into northern Maine, where we'll see teens and 20s for your afternoon highs. But as we get into Thursday, we get that reinforcing shot across the upper Great Lakes into the Ohio valleys. Teens and 20s will be common for afternoon highs, 50s in Texas. Across the Intermountain West, we see temperatures generally in the 40s and 50s, 60s, 70s in the desert southwest. This 8 to 14 day outlook, which takes us from the full second week of December, starts to bear that out. Where we started to see the temperatures moderate to near seasonal levels or slightly above or below those, we see that for the eastern three quarters of the nation. It's not, it's only parts of the far eastern coast, uh, the Pennsylvania, Virginia, and to North Carolina that we see below normal temperatures expected for the second week of December. In terms of precipitation, we see most of the country either being near normal or slightly above normal. So what that would probably mean is for those areas along the northern tier where temperatures are probably in the 30s and 40s for afternoon highs, you may see chances of snow or rain. But as we get down into the Ohio Valley, where temperature highs are generally in the mid-40s, we're most likely going to see rain for this second week of December. And obviously down around the coast uh, into Florida, that will likely be rain. We're going to see where we've seen those heavy rains across the western coast with the atmospheric rivers to end our November. We're going to see uh, below normal precipitation for that second week of December. We hope you've enjoyed this forecast here at the Weather Farm. Check back later this week for additional updates. We hope to see you soon. Please like and subscribe. Please comment. Uh, let us know what you'd like to see in a future video. We always love your comments, and we do respond to each and every one of them. Have a great day, and have a great week.